Hello, good evening, everybody. This is Antonio Ablog from the City of Elk Grove Planning uh, Department. I hope everybody could hear me. Uh, maybe staff, if you could send me a message that I'm coming through loud and clear. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, uh, as you all know, this meeting tonight is to go over um, the California North State University project specifically um, uh, to receive comments on the draft uh, EIR. Um, we do have a, um, a number of speakers um, uh, logged in. We do also have staff available. Uh, um, so um, before we get to that point of the meeting, um, Pat, if you could give me the next slide and I can provide an overview of our proceedings tonight. Um, so uh, tonight, again, we are here to receive comments on the California North, North State University Environmental Impact Report. Uh, you will receive an, an overview of what the project entails. Uh, you will also receive a summary of the draft environmental impact uh, report. Um, and again, uh, we are here tonight to receive comments from the public on the adequacy of that draft EIR. Uh, tonight's intent is not to answer any questions on the project this evening. Uh, we are here to listen to your comments uh, as they relate to that environmental impact report. Um, in the coming weeks, our uh, environmental team will be um, compiling those comments and providing written responses uh, to all those comments as they relate to the environmental impact report. Uh, it's important to note that tonight there will be no um, action on the project. We are only here to, to take your comments um, and address those as they relate to the uh, environmental impact report. Um, we do have city staff um, um, on the uh, Zoom meeting tonight. However, we do not have um, uh, any approval authority this evening. Um, if I could have the next slide, Pat. I'm sorry, it's locked up here. Give me a second. No problem. There we go. Have you shared that screen, Pat? I don't see that. Uh, sorry for some. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I think I got it fixed. But I will get it back to the right spot. Okay. Thank you. If you go to slide number three. There we go. Thank you, Pat. Um, so as far as the, the project as it stands, some of you may have joined us uh, late last spring, I believe it was June, um, when we first introduced this environmental impact report process to the public. We did a scoping meeting at City Hall. Uh, I believe at, at, at that time, um, we explained that uh, due to the scope and complexity of the project, the environmental impact report um, could take 12 to 18 months to produce. Um, and we're, we are here over 12 months later, um, with a draft environmental impact report. Um, you can see based on this timeline, we have gone through a, a lot of the uh, work uh, that needs to be completed on the project. Um, we are um, completing project review um, at the same time that this public uh, draft of the environmental impact report is out for review. Um, if you look at the slide before you, the big red star um, um, in the uh, middle of the page off to the right. That represents uh, approximately where we're at in the process at this point. Um, you can see that we've passed the 
um, initial release of the 45 uh, day public review period. Um, and we are heading towards the completion of that public review period. I believe that ends September 28th. Um, and Pat Angel, who, will, who I'll hand this off to next, he will explain um, kind of the process from there, but we will be heading into uh, finalizing the environmental impact report, which uh, entails um, responding to all the comments um, as they relate to the adequacy of that environmental impact report. Uh, once that final environmental impact report is prepared uh, with the responses to the comments, um, then staff will uh, begin preparing the project uh, to go forward to uh, project hearings. Uh, this project, based on the requests that have been made by the uh, development team, this project will have to go to both the Planning Commission uh, and City Council, um, but those public hearings cannot happen until after the final EIR is completed. Uh, can I have the next slide, Pat? Um, again, we are here to uh, hear the comments from the public. Uh, I know we have a number of um, members of the community logged in tonight. I believe it's over 100. Uh, we would like to give the opportunity for everyone that would like to provide comments to um, have that opportunity. Um, and in order to uh, provide everybody with that opportunity, um, I'd like to go over kind of the process and ground rules for tonight's meeting. Um, first of all, by default, uh, your line is muted and your video will be turned off. Um, as you see, uh, staff also has their uh, video turned off. Uh, we will just be um, providing graphics via the um, PowerPoint this evening. Um, this meeting will be recorded um, and it will be posted to the city's website uh, so you, that you can review um, the audio at a later time. We also have a court reporter who will be taking notes of the meeting uh, that will assist us in um, accurately taking your comments and providing those to our environmental consultant to respond to. And for those that would like to speak, uh, we ask that you use the raise your hand feature in Zoom uh, to be called on. Uh, the participants will be called on in the order that they raise their hand. Um, staff will state your name uh, to let uh, you know that you will be um, uh, given the opportunity to speak. Uh, and we will ask uh, when uh, your name is called, you unmute yourself and begin speaking. Um, similar to our other public uh, comment meetings, uh, you will be given three minutes to speak, um, and but only one opportunity to speak. Uh, we do have staff um, with a timer uh, for that three minutes. We will provide a 30 second notification um, when you're nearing the end of your allotted time. And at the end of the three minutes, uh, your line will be muted. Um, um, again, with um, over a hundred people, uh, logged in tonight um, and with three minutes to speak. Um, there may be times where we may need to, to give staff a few minute break, um, but we will um, give you adequate notice um, should we do that. Um, from there, um, I will hand it off to Pat Angel with Ascent Environmental. Um, he will provide you with a project overview and also uh, a summary of the environmental impact report um, and the final EIR uh, that will uh, be generated after uh, the public comment period closes and after uh, tonight's uh, comment meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for participating. I am going to provide a, a brief overview of the project details, and I will also provide an overview of the content of the EIR. Uh, the uh, previous slide, in fact, I'll just this, this slide here, I'm actually gonna have at the very end of this presentation, so you can be reminded on how this process is going to work. So with that, uh, a brief overview of the project's location. It's in the western boundary of the city along Interstate 5, just south of Elk Grove Boulevard. The project site consists of 12 parcels, a little over 24 acres. It's currently developed with a mix of office and commercial uses. Adjacent land uses in the project area include other commercial uses, residential uses, and there is a church on site. 
The uh, project site is located within the 200 year floodplain. Uh, overview of the project is the redevelopment of the site into a medical center consisting of approximately 1.8 million square feet of uh, building use that could have up to 4,000 employees. It's proposed to be developed in a series of three phases that would consist of a hospital, central plant, those are the phase one components. Later phases would include the outpatient clinic, the medical office, two parking garages that would also provide retail and office uses, and a dormitory with a student garage facility. This is an architectural elevation of the proposed hospital building, which is proposed to be uh, 13 stories in height, approximately 261 feet. And this is the central plant facility that would also be built during phase one. Uh, there are architectural renderings for these two features in phase one. Phase two and phase three would come back later for a specific design review. And currently there are no architectural designs for those, those building features. The project also proposes a series of um, bicycle and pedestrian and, um, facilities to uh, connect with existing facilities in the project area, as well as to uh, promote pedestrian and bicycle use on the sites. In addition to the on-site improvements, the project does have some off-site uh, proposed improvements. This is a emergency left turn pocket that's proposed just beyond the intersection of West Heron uh, that would be used for emergency vehicles only. Uh, it would be uh, controlled by emergency vehicles that would sit, that would uh, trigger uh, traffic control similar to uh, fire stations that have signals to control traffic in order to allow vehicles to uh, move across the, inter uh, the uh, roadway, as well as an arm barrier at the hospital to uh, keep only emergency vehicles from using the driveway. Additional offsite improvements, the project will require some electrical improvements, which will require some distribution and substation improvements uh, maintained by SMUD. Uh, there is also an offsite sewer line improvement that's required in order to accommodate the build out of the project site along repairing drive as shown in this exhibit. The general plan has a series of policies associated with transportation uh, improvements uh, as part of the project's review and consistency with the general plan or require consistency with the general plan. There are a series of uh, roadway or intersection improvements that will be required that the city will condition the project to do. Uh, these intersections consist of West Terran and Riparian Drive, Elk Grove Boulevard and the I-5 northbound ramp, Elk Grove and West Terran uh, intersection, Elk Grove Boulevard, Franklin Boulevard, and the uh, West Heron Shell gas station slash Severn gas station driveway. These improvements consist of, uh, in some cases, signalization, turn uh, pocket improvements, lane reconfiguration, uh, and modification of pre-existing signal timing. Please excuse the wordiness of this uh, slide, but the requested approvals before the city consists of a general plan amendment to change the land use designation of six of the parcels from their current designation to employment center, uh, accompanying zoning amendment to change the zoning designation of these six parcels to uh, business and professional office park. There's also a request for text amendments to general plan policy ER 2-3 and the municipal code related to development in the 200-year floodplain. There's also a proposed amendment to the bicycle, pedestrian, and trails master plan. Approval of an overall district development plan for overall site development. A design review required for the phase one components, which is the hospital and the central plants. Approval of a conditional use permit. Uh, approval of a uniform sign program, the proposed abandonment of West Terran courts, and the execution of an agreement to provide additional uh, law enforcement uh, services to the hospital site. So now I'm going to go over the environmental review process. Uh, for those that who went to the NOP uh, uh, scoping meeting back a year ago, some of this will uh, you'll seen before, but I felt it was important to go over these items again. So. CEQA is an acronym for the California Environmental Quality Act. It is a required public disclosure process for determining environmental impacts of a project under consideration by an agency. 
Uh, it requires disclosure, uh, consideration, and uh, mitigation environmental impacts. Uh, is intended to provide the necessary information for the decision-making body, ultimately, in this case, the City Council, uh, all the environmental consequences of whether or not uh, of the project uh, to use on whether or not to approve the project. It's important to note that certification of the EIR does not indicate project approval. Uh, an EIR can be certified and the project can be denied based on the conclusions of the EIR. So what is an EIR? Of the series of environmental documents that can be prepared for a project, an EIR is the most extensive. Uh, it discloses the environmental impacts of the project, recommends mitigation measures, also looks at alternatives to the project to avoid environmental impacts. And as I mentioned before, it has to be certified uh, by the city prior to any consideration or action on the project. Important to keep in mind in regards to the environmental review process is what uh, an EIR does and doesn't do. Again, as I mentioned before, it, it provides disclosure of environmental effects, uh, identifies mitigation measures and alternatives that could address these environmental impacts. Uh, however, it doesn't require mitigation for pre-existing environmental conditions such as uh, current air quality conditions in uh, the Sacramento region. Uh, it's not an advocacy piece for the project nor does uh, a project have to be denied because of significant environmental impacts. There are certain findings the city can make to find the impacts of the project acceptable because of other economic uh, or public benefit reasons. Uh, environmental documents also do not address issues that are purely economic and social. Uh, sometimes there are concerns about property values, certainly a significant and important issue to be considered by the decision makers, but it is not considered something that the environmental process addresses. This is a list of the environmental issue areas that are evaluated in the draft EIR. And this is a identification of what was identified as significant unavoidable impacts in the draft EIR. These are impacts that there is no feasible mitigation to fully address and mitigate the impacts of the project, thus they're identified as significant and unavoidable. Should the city decide to approve the project, certain findings will have to be made to address these impacts and why they are acceptable. Uh, these impacts include uh, aesthetic impacts associated with visual character, glare and lighting, uh, long-term operational air emission impacts, construction noise, single event noise issues with ambulance sirens, and the environmental impacts associated with building the offsite infrastructure. There's also a series of cumulative impacts, again, associated with aesthetic issues, visual character, and light and glare, air quality, groundwater, construction noise, water supply, and wastewater service. The alternative, the EIR does look at three alternatives to uh, address potential environmental impacts. Alternative one is known as the no project, no development. It's Basically, the condition is the project stays in its current condition. It doesn't get, uh, the project doesn't get approved and it continues as its current commercial and office use. Alternative two would consist of a review uh, building height of the hospital, which would reduce the total number of patient beds in the site uh, and would also remove the on, uh, on site helicopter landing sites, uh, the helis, helipad site uh, proposed, heli, excuse me, helistop site. Alternative three is the proposal to take uh, this project as it's proposed and actually place it uh, on the Lent Ranch Marketplace site uh, adjacent to the uh, casino site. Just a quick overview on schedule. Uh, the comment period, as mentioned, ends uh, September 28th. Uh, we anticipate the final EIR will get released sometime in November 2020. Uh, and then subsequent to that, there will be uh, hearings before the Planning Commission and eventually the City Council to consider uh, the proposal. Uh, it's very much recommended that you provide comments in writing. We're accepting verbal comments tonight, but uh, most certainly it's, it's best to put your comments in writing. And oftentimes uh, at meetings like this, you'll provide comments verbally and then we'll complete the meeting and an hour or two later, you'll think of a whole bunch of other items that you think were important. And uh, certainly you can provide those comments in writing after this meeting. And there's multiple methods of doing that. You can submit uh, written comments to this address. 
uh, which was also provided uh, in the noticing and this information is up on the city's website. You can also email to this uh, email address. The city also has the ability for you to go directly on the website and post your comments there. And that address is provided. Again, the comment period ends on September 28th. And again, this is the same slide as before, just to remind everybody about how we are handling comments tonight. And I thank you for your time and look forward to your input. And Nicole, I think we're ready to receive comments. Great, we'll go ahead and get started. Just as a reminder, I'll state the name that signed in with the Zoom and let you know that you're free to unmute your line just to make sure that you're able to do that yourself. Um, and it looks like our first person uh, signed in is Artie Zahadani, and I, I apologize, I'll do my best on pronouncing names tonight, so bear with me. Um, and Artie, you may go ahead. And if this isn't Artie, because I see you're signed in here a couple different times, if you could please state your name. Are you trying to reach Patrick Foy? I don't know, your, your sign in name shows Artie, but go ahead and state your name and go ahead. Oh, apologies, okay, my name is Patrick Foy. I'm a resident of District 1, and I live one mile away from the medical school. Um, and about 25 years ago, in my, early in my career, I put together about probably about a dozen and a half uh, EIRs, worked on them in one form or another, uh, working for environmental engineering companies. So I did thoroughly review this one. It's been a while since I've re reviewed one closely, but the, this EIR is, is totally solid. The, uh, interestingly, uh, thinking back to when I used to do them, the... the um, we didn't think about things like uh, electrical vehicle charging stations or collecting rainwater to use on the uh, on the hospital grounds. These are uh, all advanced uh, things that are now considered on EIRs and it's all part of this particular EIR and it is uh, completely solid and I'm totally confident in it. Uh, the uh, bigger pictures on this uh, particular project is that we are all in this pandemic together. We are faced with flattening the curve, which means we are trying to, it's, it's all about hospital beds. And this project in its current form is 400 hospital beds that will be added to the state's ability to deal with the pandemic. Redu reducing the size of the hospital, I think will, will affect that uh, number of hospital beds. Uh, we have, will have immediate access to local, very high quality hospital care. And it'll provide more than a thousand jobs in, through this process. Uh, most of them will be high paying jobs with people that will be living right here in our community, spending money at our, uh, you know, raising tax revenues by buying vehicles at the auto mall and that type of a thing. So this is very, very critical. And um, last point I want to make is that uh, I'm not sure if anyone's paying attention, but the CNU Medical S School, the average minimum scores for the admitted students is now higher than the average admitted student scores for UC Davis. I'm not saying UC Davis is a bad medical school. It's a great medical school, but I'm telling you that UC, uh, the CNU is going to be a nationally classed medical school with a national class hospital where people will find this a destination to get a great medical education and provide great medical care to our community. So thank you for your time. Great, we'll be moving on to our next caller, which is Jake Rambo. You can go ahead and unmute. Good evening, my name is Jake Rambo. I'm the president of the Stone Lake Master Association. We are the homeowners association representing the 1,467 units that make up the Stone Lake neighborhood. Our association has overwhelmingly voted to oppose this process and this EIR confirms our concerns. Uh, first of all, we are concerned about the crooked process that the city has applied throughout this. We've seen extensive financial uh, entanglements between the project itself and city officials. We've seen inappropriate city support for this, including the use of city funds for advertising on behalf of CNU. We've seen excessive support, uh, excessive use of public funds to support this project, including city employees making promises that this process will, that this project will receive special treatment and expedited consideration, as well as promises from city staff to be at the beck and call of the hospital to attend meetings at the hospital whenever demanded. 
We've seen the city certify this project for AB 900 status without any notice to the community, contrary to the city's prior promise that any significant action on this process would involve public participation. Lastly, we see a project that is proposing significant changes to the general plan that was just updated two years ago. We are concerned about the inadequacy of the environmental document. Specific concern includes the complete neglect of riparian drive and the traffic impacts upon riparian drive as a result of the project. Riparian drive will funnel traffic directly into West Terran Court, the primary access point to the hospital. Yet there are no intended traffic improvements for riparian drive. Riparian Drive is already a problem street with excessive speeds and poor regulation. Further, the, um, we are concerned because given the presence of a university, we already see significant traffic problems, including multiple traffic violations a day with students speeding and running signs as they, tra as they travel to CNU for class. We are concerned that the document is inadequate in how it impacts the, how it addresses the shadow impact of the hospital on renewable energy resources, contrary to some of the projections in the document. Indica you have 30 seconds left. Indications are that this will, the shadow will extend much farther to cover the lakeside community. Uh, we are concerned that the city has given a minimum 45 day review on such a significant project in the midst of an environment in the midst of the COVID pandemic. The city, we are requesting additional time to complete our review of this EIR and asking that the city extend the deadline by no less than 15 days. 45 days is the minimum in good times and these certainly aren't. Your time is up. Thank you for your comments. All right, next up we have David Nelson. You may go ahead and unmute your line. Hi, good evening. Uh, this is David Nelson and I am the Director of Public Policy for the Sacramento Asian uh, Chamber of Commerce. And my comments will be brief uh, this evening. I'm just calling to speak on behalf uh, of the Chamber in support of the CNU Medical Center because we believe it will create high wage, jo high wage jobs um, and essential health care services for the city of Elk Grove as well as the region as a whole. So those are my comments and our support from the Sacramento Asian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. The next caller is signed in with a name that's appearing several times in the chat. So if you could please unmute yourself and state your name and then you may begin. I'm Raymond Chucky Hitchcock, former chairman, Wilton Rancheria Tribe. I support the CNU Medical Center because it will create high wage jobs and unique educational and partnership opportunities for the city of Elk Grove and the region. Tangi Kamu, thank you. Thank you for your comments. And our next caller also will need to state their name before they begin. Thank you. You can go ahead. It looks like you muted your line again. It was unmuted just a moment ago. So trying this again, sorry about that. There you go, go right ahead. You can uh, see my, name is Vin, my name is Vince Bernacki and uh, I appreciate this opportunity to speak in support of the CNU hospital project. Um, I'm the president of Shutter Electric, a regional electrical contracting company, and I would like to state that uh, Shutter Electric and myself personally are both solid proponents of the CNU project. That's not only because of the obvious connection for the construction jobs that it'll create in our region for, for
for potentially us and, and other contractors, but but also the, the benefits that a hospital and teaching institution of this bring to the community in a whole, and that, you know, they're, it's going to bring on uh, high wage jobs and, and guarantee great services to the community in addition. So I, I strongly urge everyone to support this opportunity to have this project in our region. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, our next caller is, sorry, I can't see my mouse, or Dwight Zuck. You may go ahead and unmute and go ahead. Dwight, it looks like you're still muted if you want to unmute. Dwight, if you're speaking, we're not able to hear you. If you can unmute your line. It looks like we're having some audio issues and we're not able to connect with Dwight. If you wanna um, go ahead and try raising your hand again, I can come back to you later, Dwight, thank you. Our next caller will be Robert Burness. If you wanna go ahead and unmute, you may go ahead. Robert, we're not able to hear you. Can you check to make sure you're unmuted? There we go. Awesome. Robert right. Burness. Robert Burness representing Stone Lakes National Wildlife Refuge Friends. Uh, the project will have significant impact on wildlife and on the Stone Lakes Refuge. Let me count the ways. One, there is no supporting data for the applicant's assumption on the number of helicopter flights per year. Is it comparable with that of other hospitals in California? Two, the evaluation of listed species in Table 3.31 is deficient. It does not clearly distinguish between on-site occurrence and the occurrence in the vicinity when that occurrence could be impacted by the project. I will skip three and four and go to five. The baseline assessment is inadequate. There is no bird safe survey data which, with which to establish the potential significance of impact. Six, the analysis of the potential disturbance to and the flushing of roosting and nesting birds from helicopter flights is incomplete and inadequate. Seven, there is no analysis of the potential foraging waterfowl disturbance or flushing due to helicopter activity. Eight, the noise disturbance survey is inadequate. Only two of the 11 noise testing locations were in the refuge. The data is not linked to any noise significance threshold for birds. Nine, light trespass identified as a potential impact on wildlife is not clearly defined, nor is it addressed in the mitigation measures. Ten, an overall bird collision threat analysis must be included in the report in order to assess the necessary changes to the building design to reduce the level of threat to less than significant. 11, the report does not consider the potential avian impacts and impacts on the refuge if a helicopter bird strike does occur, including the potential for FAA mandated, cull mandated culling of birds. 12, CEQA requires the report to show compliance with the South SAC HCP. The report recognizes that disturbance may lead to roost site abandonment for greater sandhill cranes. This would hinder the HCP's recovery plan for the, plan for the crane and represent an impact, inconsistent policy objective. 13, mitigation involving a higher flight path for helicopters does not account either for kettling of migratory birds prior to longer flights or higher, uh, higher flying migratory birds passing through the area. 14, Flight restrictions are very difficult to enforce. Mitigation measures do not provide for commitment or means to enforce. 15, mitigation measures do not make it mitigate for noise disturbance impacts. 16, mitigation for Swainson Hawk is inadequate. A depth of fish and wild, a Department of Fish and Wildlife incidents, incidental take permit is voluntary. is voluntary. The measure must require an incidental take permit. 17, the measure must also limit compensatory hawk mitigation within Elk Growth's program 
to within five, five miles of a site. 18, if an incidental take permit is warranted for Swainson Hawk, then the report clearly shows that it is also warranted for the greater Sandhill Crane. But the full protection of the species um, uh, 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 per take permit is not allowable. The impact Thank you. is- Your time is up. Okay. Our next caller is Dr. James Reed. You may go ahead and unmute yourself. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. James Reed. And I was formerly on the Franklin Laguna Planning Advisory Committee prior to the city of El Grove becoming a city. Uh, sitting on that committee, if you look at the intersection of Laguna and Highway 5, I mean Interstate 5, you'll notice that none of the buildings is higher than five stories. That's because U.S. Fish and Wildlife regulations prohibit structures in excess of 50 feet immediately adjacent to a national wildlife refuge. If you look at all the hotels down there, gold, gym, and everything else. So in light of Mr. Burris's, Burnus's comments, I am also arguing that the EIR, the DEIR is woefully inadequate. It does not address the Pacific Flyway. It does not address the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, which the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is responsible for enforcing. The bird strike or the bird building strike immediately adjacent to the Pacific Flyway does not show a spring nor a winter survey showing approximately how many migratory birds pass through the Pacific Flyway that basically surrounds uh, the proposed site. Now, I also teach Sequinipa at Sac State. It's many of my students are online. Uh, because the draft EIR does not include a biological opinion from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as to the adequacy of proposed mitigations, and because there is not a winter and a spring survey, because they come here in the winter, they leave in the spring. <clears throat> that would give you an approximate count. Mr. Burnus alluded to the fact that there is not a count of the Sandhill Cranes going to the Consumers River Preserve, which is immediately due south of the Stone Lakes National uh, 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 Wildlife Refuge. 30 seconds. I would re respectfully request that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service be fully consulted, that a biological opinion become part of the biological resources section of the DEIR, or there will be severe ramifications with dead birds and your feathers in the up. parking lot. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Patricia Hill, you may go ahead and unmute your line. Good evening, my name is Pat Hill and I'm speaking on behalf of Night Shield Security. We highly support the CNU Medical Center because we believe it will create necessary highways jobs to meet the rising cost of living in Elk Grove and surrounding areas, facilitate economic empowerment for working class communities, and establish essential health care services for Elk Grove in the region. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Barbara Leary, you're our next caller. You may go ahead and unmute your line. It looks like you're still on mute, Barbara. Hello. We can hear you, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. This is Barbara Leary. I'm speaking on behalf of the Sacramento Sierra Club who's very concerned about the impacts of this project. 
We don't feel the DEIR adequately analyzed or addressed those impacts. It did not use bird survey data for its analysis of or mitigation for helicopter strikes. Flight altitudes and bird use in a potential helicopter flight path must be considered along with robust survey data. Omitting this data provided an inappropriate solution to avoid hitting migratory birds such as sandhill cranes who rise higher in the air in a circular pattern passing between the 2,000 and 2,500 foot elevation that they propose to fly the helicopters. Clearly the mitigation is inadequate as other birds in the area also fly at those altitudes. There is no discussion of impact on the Stone Lakes National Wildlife Refuge. The FAA allows culling birds, meaning killing them, to avoid future bird strikes covering an area up to five miles from the proposed hospital, putting the refuge in peril of having its species killed because of ill-conceived placement of a hospital with helicopter access. We should also take into consideration the potential for um, uh, damage to the helicopter and uh, potential loss of life of occupants of those helicopters. The DEIR does not consider the impacts to or mitigation for foraging birds from helicopter flights who can be severely impacted if disturbed while feeding. Mitigation for birds striking this building relies on pilot credit 55, meaning bird collision deference requires physical modifications to the facility to minimize bird strikes. A 10-story hospital is at high risk for um, creating a hazard. An overall bird collision threat analysis must establish a rating that dictates physical changes made to the building. The mitigation cannot be analyzed for success without knowing the rating for the facility, how the rating was derived or physical changes would actually eliminate the bird strike risk. This analysis is not included and must be in this DEIR. As it stands, it is deficient as an informational document. The DEIR indicates the project will seek to obtain an incidental take. 30 second warning. can be done for Swainson's hawks. This is not possible for greater sand hill cranes as they are a fully protected species by the California uh, fully Protected uh, Species Act. Uh, we are opposed to um, the placement of this hospital at this site and uh, we hope that uh, this DEIR uh, period of review will be continued as it's very difficult to review all of these documents online uh, given the current circumstances. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Dwight, let's try this again and see if we can get you connected. Do you want to try unmuting your line? Dwight, it still looks like your line is muted. All right, we'll move on to the next caller and we can try again here at the end. Uh, Nora O'Reilly, you're next uh, to speak. Go ahead and unmute your line. Hi, I'm Nora O'Reilly and I live in Stone Lake Community. I've been here for 18 years. Um, we have a beautiful community of people that value their property. Um, we want to keep it secure and safe. And I also feel that you should consider the placement of this hospital, not only because it's not an ideal place for the community, but also for the traffic and the uh, issues that you pointed out in your report in terms of emergency vehicles, congestion, um, as well as the West Tarrant Court. And also, um, I do feel like this hospital would bring significant jobs to the community, which is wonderful. I do agree that bringing this hospital into Elk Grove is a great idea. It's just not an ideal place here in the Stone Lake community and the wildlife. So that was what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Kelly Kaur, you are now able to speak. You can go ahead and unmute your line. Hi, good evening. 
evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I am um, a physician in Elk Grove, as well as a property owner for Stone Lake. I am calling in to oppose this hospital due to multiple reasons, including uh, impact on traffic, decreased pro property value, and uh, increased congestion. As far as somebody mentioning that we need this hospital due to pandemic, I'd like to point that pandemic is a temporary thing and this hospital will be lifelong uh, with our city. In addition, this will increase the cost for security on the city um, and the taxpayers will be liable for that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, it looks like um, we have another caller signed in as Artie. So if you could please state your name um, and then you may begin. Hello, my name is Damon Conklin and I'm speaking on behalf of the Sacramento Regional Builders Exchange and our 1000 member companies who operate in the commercial construction space. We are supportive of the California North State University Medical Center project because we believe it will create essential high wage jobs and serve the critical medical needs of the Elk Grove community and greater Sacramento region with the highest quality of care. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next caller is Dwayne Osorio. And if you wanna go ahead and unmute your line, you're welcome to start. My name is Diane Osorio and I am the Mother Low Chapter Director of the Sierra Club. I just wanna be brief and echo um, the comments from our Sacramento group chair, Barbara Larry and Rob Burness on the concerns of this inadequate DEIR. We hope that it is um, being reconsidered. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you for your comments, Dan. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Thanks. All right, next up is Amar Sherhill. If you'd like to go ahead and unmute your line, you may go ahead. Hello, my name is Amr Shergill. I'm a resident of the Stone Lake area just down the road from this proposed hospital. And it may be true that um, Elk Grove needs a hospital. We do. And we need jobs and we need clear roads. But this is a, a discussion of environmental impact report. And I'd encourage folks to focus on that. If you call in to support, but your discussion is about money, this isn't the time to talk. We've heard from the friends of the Stone Lake Refuge. We've heard from Sierra Club. They've made clear that there are issues here which cannot be mitigated, which means they cannot be fixed. It doesn't matter how much money you pour into this. It doesn't matter how hard you try. You cannot fix this. This refuge is a jewel for our community and for the entire region. We shouldn't be taking actions now that are going to destroy this environment for generations to come. As we see around the country and across California, these uh, short-sighted decisions regarding our environment have repercussions that future generations have to pay for. So let's not mortgage the future of our children by you know, trying to put in this hospital in a place where it clearly does not fit. Um, let's take a step back, you know, let's do it a different way. Let's do it somewhere else. But, you know, let's all be clear that this hospital right now, right here, just isn't right. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, our next caller is Gary Sidner. If you want to go ahead and unmute, you may go ahead. Hi, thank you. In response to the draft EIR, we offer the following comments. A height and visual impact. The hospital building at 13 stories and 261 feet would be the tallest building in Elk Grove, far exceeding the four story maximum height that has been required for every other building in Elk Grove, including the hotels. Is it possible that developers who wish to build at a higher height and were denied would sue the city of Elk Grove based on the special treatment of CNU? The building will forever alter the visual character of the area. The draft EIR describes this impact as significant and, un and unavoidable. For this reason alone, the project should be denied. The shadows, this has been already discussed. The building at its height and location will cast shadows north and east of Elk Grove Boulevard and into Laguna West. 
These shadows will occur from December to January between 3 p.m. and sunset. The draft EIR describes this impact as significant and, un and unavoidable. Police and crime per the draft EIR, quote, implementing the project may result in an increase in service calls for police services for a range of circumstances. Under existing conditions, few or no service calls are received in the project location and surrounding portion of Elk Grove in the city, beat one, end quote. And, quote, therefore, it is estimated that the proposed 400 patient bed hospital designed to operate at a level two trauma center would generate approximately 1,600 calls annually. This is per the City of Elk Grove Police Department in 2020. This is evidence that the department believes that crime will increase at the hospital, no doubt spilling over into the Stone Lake and adjacent Westside communities. So we would go from little to no crime to 1,600 calls for police per year, an average of 4.38 per day. This is an unacceptable negative impact for our communities. Construction and 10-year time frame. Per the draft EIR, this project is scheduled in three phases that may take 10 years to complete. This means 10 years of demolition, construction, demolition, construction, and more demolition and construction. It is estimated that the phase one, that during phase one, there would be 1,500 truck trips and 400 workers in the project, bringing substantial noise and increased traffic congestion to an area that was not designed for such project. Thus, during a 10-year period, Westside residents will have to deal with changing fencing, construction, and a, and a 265 foot construction crane and noise and traffic, 90,000 gallons of diesel fuel. The project would store 90,000 gallons of diesel fuel in two underground tanks under the central plant. These would supposedly be designed to withstand, the, withstand being submerged during a flood event. The project is within 200 year floodplain and could be submerged under 10 feet of water for the city of Elk Grove's staff report. What guarantee is there that these tanks Your would not- Thank you for your comment. Thousands of gallons of diesel fuel into our and adjacent neighborhoods, creating a huge hazmat event. Thank you. All right, our next caller is Vicki Gomez. You may go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, I'm calling because I'm a resident of the Lakeside community and I oppose this project. This community was built as a cohesive community where people could understand, gather, connect with each other. We do not have 13 story buildings or universities in our midst when I've been in this community for 20 years. That is not why I moved here from the Bay Area to come back into a place where there would be increased traffic congestion, medical uh, industry in my own community, also creating um, environmental impact on the beautiful uh, riparian area that we have here. This is not anything that will uh, uh, positively affect our property values is going to lower them and it's also going to change the character of the community with the increased crime and other kinds of mental health issues that will spill out invariably into the surrounding community. This, if Elk Grove does need a hospital, it does not need to be in this community. There are plenty of places down Elk Grove Boulevard where the Costco is and, or if you could put it by that casino where there's not gonna be communities there that will be impacted. We moved here and the folks in Lakeside moved here because we enjoy connecting as a small community, being able to ride our bicycles, our children are safe. This hospital and this proposed project with 10 years of construction going on will disrupt the quality of life for the people who live here. And it also will negatively affect our property values. And this is not welcome in our community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, Dwight Zuck, let's see if we can get you connected this one last time. I'll go ahead and allow you to speak. And if you want to try unmuting your line. Oh, 
Now we've got two Dwight's in here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the next one here just a second. Dwight, can I try yes. 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 Oh, great. Great. Go ahead. All right. I, now I'm on two feet. So I hope. Can you hear me? Um, we can. There's a little bit of feedback. If you're able to close the other feed, that would certainly help. See, I think you're going to okay, now, now I'm on. I should be anyway. I never saw an unmute option offered by you, and I, know, I didn't know how to do it. No worries. Okay. We got you now. Go right ahead. I don't. Can I? I'm starting my time now. Yes, um, go ahead. So I, I've been a resident of 18 years. I'm a chemical engineer. I've been working in the state of California, putting in projects uh, throughout the state, north to south, into Nevada, and, and more. Um, my most difficult project over the last couple of years have been putting a uh, um, with the newly formed Cal Green um, 2017 requirements, I stood in three different meetings so far, and I've held up this 283-page uh, document, and I said, I don't see Cal Green addressed in any of these EIR, and it is environmental impact. It in involves Cal Green, hence the name. Nobody to this date had, had mentioned this. So Cal Green talks about a lot of things, many, many things, and none of them are mentioned in the CIR. I've gone through every document, typed the word green, Cal Green, uh, none of them are in there. A lot of it speaks to how many um, parking spot requirements are, there, are in there for a lot of people. Um, I've mentioned this before. I know there's three phases and it goes up to 3,160 parking spots. For ADA alone, just to handicap people, one in 25 must be um, be a handicap with the stripe line beside it for the extra space. Then for EDSE and bar electric vehicle supply equipment, you need to add one for all those other cars. You need to add eight percent of your total if you have two, over 201 parking spots. That's not in here. Nor are all the parking spots. And if you hash mark besides each one of these EBSEs or between two of, two of them. I don't think you'll have enough parking. That's just one aspect. CNU has a lot of plans for buildings with elevators for parking in them. I don't see their power power plan drawn out. Um, there's bicycle parking requirements per the Cal Green 2017 requirements. None of that is mentioned in any drawings I've seen. There's many finer points. I won't go into that. But the other big thing I don't see on any of these drawings, and I, I did hear what Gary Sidner said about the underground uh, diesel fuel tanks. That's scary, especially in a flood zone. But I don't see the oxygen tank. I was told in one meeting over at the pizza parlor on the east side of town that they were in there. I still don't see them in any drawings. These are very large structures, over two stories high. If they go vertical, if they go horizontal, I don't think you'll have the space for them. And you need two, I'm talking dose, because you need to have a backup for life support. 30 this second warning. Okay, for, for life support. I still have not seen this, but EIR certainly is much is easy compared to Cal Green requirement for a very tight project. There's a lot of other things that, and the renderings that have been provided are horrible. You don't talk about sound and silence, but you must include Cal Green. I'll submit my points in writing. I don't know why this is avoided. I bought it up eight, for eight months ago and, and, and several times since, and nobody's touched it. And it's it's very difficult and far harder than that Your first individual. Up. Thank you for your comments. First individual said the EIR is not difficult. It's not compared to Calgary, but this EIR is pathetic. Thank you. All right, our next caller is Amrit Santu. And if you'd like to go ahead and unmute your line, you can begin. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Amrit Sandhu. I am a Stone Lake resident and a healthcare provider in the Sacramento region. Um, I have reviewed this EIR and many of the concerns, um, the significant and unmitigable concerns are, are disruptive to this community. The shadow, the aesthetics, the height of the building, the effect on the wildlife preserve. Many of these things are not mitigable, mitigable sorry, based on the um, EIR. And in addition to that, 1,500 uh, trucks coming through for excavation. My assumption is, which is not addressed on the 
DEIR is that they will be coming down I-5 and making that right-hand turn onto um, Harbor Point West Tarrant. Our streets are not made for that. There's already plenty of car accidents that happen there. Lots of traffic violations that have been reported to the city. Um, the city, or I'm sorry, CNU is requesting the city to change its general plan, to change the floodplain requirements, to increase um, lanes from Franklin all the way in. All these things are being asked of the city, which is really being asked of the citizens of this city. Just because the city approves it doesn't mean it doesn't affect the rest of us. Many of us moved to the west side for the peace and the quiet and not to be in the middle of a 10 year construction zone. And um, the impact on this community is going to be large. The impact on the wildlife refuge is going to be significant. There's no one saying no hospital seeing you. What we're all asking is put it in the right place. And the west side of Elk Grove is not the right place, especially when it's gonna increase crime, which is in, their, in the EIR increased traffic which is in the EIR. The city engineer last year stated that traffic is a huge problem on Elk Grove and Laguna because those are the two arteries that run through and that they could do they have no plans to change that it's only going to get worse. So now we're going to add 480 people per day on Elk Grove Boulevard to the west side where there's only one way in and one way out. You come in through I-5 you leave through I-5 and that's going to increase traffic. Traffic may not be an issue right now during the pandemic because everybody's at home. Morning. However, when traffic comes back and we're all back at work because the pandemic is temporary, we will all suffer from the traffic issues, the safety issues, the noise issues, and the visual glare that this hospital will bring on our community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mark Graham, you're our next caller. You may unmute your line and go ahead. All right, can you hear me? We can. Good, uh, thank you. This is Mark Graham, I live in Elk Grove. First thing, please extend the public comment period to allow residents more time to review the long and complicated draft EIR and comment on it. Now, the draft document fails to adequately present the environmental impacts associated with long-term exposure to pulsed modulated microwave electromagnetic radiation. This will come from several sources. Um, with people building the hospital, and once it is built, with people working in the hospital, patients, patients, patients' families, there will be pressure from the telecommunications companies such as AT&T and Verizon to install and operate powerful new 4G and 5G cell towers and cell antennas in, at the hospital and all around it including probably up on the roof. The city does not permit cell antennas immediately adjacent to the front yard of a residential dwelling. However, the city has very weak regulations on cell antennas in all other types of zones. The range of a 4G, which is fourth generation cell antenna is well over a mile. The range of a 5G cell antenna is over 2000 feet, according to Verizon Chief Executive Officer Lowell McAdam. Uh, for see details, see my website, which is www.keepcellantennasawayfromourelkgrovehomes.org. Or more simply, and this is for everybody out there who's interested in cell antenna issues, www.keepcellantennasaway.org. There are many studies showing that radiation at far less power density than is commonly produced and transmitted by cell towers and cell antennas is harmful to many forms of wildlife, including bees, other insects, and birds. It is believed that the radiation interferes with the navigation ability of bees. Bees are already under assault from a combination of the reckless and widespread use of herbicides, insecticides, such as glyphosate, which is a carcinogen, aerial spraying of metal particles in aerosol solutions as so-called solar radiation management and mites. There will likely be other uh, EMF sources for the taking off and landing of helicopters in the form of radar. Radar has a very long range. It's a different frequency from cell antennas and towers and has different, although still harmful effects on bees, other insects. 
aquifers, et cetera. Um, also, another impact that needs to be considered, there will also be a massive and reckless and irresponsible use of insecticides, such as glyphosate, which is extremely toxic to bees, other insects, and all wildlife. The DER does not mention this, and it should. The DEIR should specifically include an alternative that if this thing is approved, there should be minimal, and I mean minimal, new cell towers, minimal new cell antennas, and minimal use your of time insecticides. Is up. Thank you for your comments. Our next caller on the line that's also signed in as Artie, if you could please state your name and confirm that you haven't already provided comments. Hello? Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Noah Painter. I'm with the IBEW. Oh, sorry, that is, I am not Artie. Um, <laughs> that's okay, you can go ahead. Got it. My name is Noah Painter. I'm with the IBEW Local 340. Uh, I'm here this evening to speak in support uh, of the draft EIR and appreciate staff's willingness to allow me to comment. Uh, we support the CNU Medical Center because we believe it will create highway jobs and essential health care services for Elk Grove and the region. Uh, those are my comments for this evening. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Dwight, it, unless this has been forwarded to someone else, I'm going to unmute just to confirm, but I believe you've already given your comments. Right, on one topic, and I merged about three into mine. I'd like to speak a little bit more on the timing of all this. We, um, we can only allow one person three minutes during the meeting. Well, we'll move on to caller uh, Stacy Anderson, and I'll unmute your line. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, great. I hear a lot of people talking about how it's going to bring um, better health care to the region and high wage jobs. And I just want to point out that CNU has absolutely zero experience in construction and operations of a hospital of this size, let alone a hospital in general. If you want somebody who knows how to run a hospital, that would be, oh, I don't know, Dignity, who is actually building a hospital right down the street. Hopefully people know that. If they don't, guess what? It's coming. Additionally, we have uh, concerns about traffic congestion in all phases. And I want everybody else to know, again, this is not just in the Stone Lake Lake uh, side and lake uh, uh, communities. This is going to affect all the way down to Elk Grove Boulevard and Franklin, which affects a greater amount of people who are commuting uh, to the Rayleigh Shopping Center and whatnot. How long is this construction going to last? Not only that, that is also the major artery for people to get to I-5 on the west side. Uh, traffic is gonna be unsustainable. The height is gonna be over six times any height of a single family home in the area. And there's a reason for that. The master plan community uh, required certain aesthetics. Um, that includes nothing over four stories. There's a reason the property wasn't zoned the way CNU is asking, which includes floodplain issues, the master plan community, the National Wildlife Refuge. It's a small area relative to the size of the project, and we should not renege on the proper planning when this master plan community was created. CNU is offering the hiring of off-duty officers, which acknowledges the increase in crime. However, are they also going to be protecting the surrounding residential neighborhood or are they just ejecting the problem people from CNU to infiltrate the neighborhood, in which case we have great concerns. The length of the construction of this uh, intersection roadway, all the improvements, the 10 years is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, the significant and unavoidable impacts are many and unacceptable alternatives are only options one which is not do it at all, or three, move it, in which case I feel really sorry for whoever gets this mess. Significant and unavoidable impacts are exactly that. Hospital beds, pandemic, it's been said by several healthcare providers that hospital beds are not the fine. issue. Uh, ultimately, again, as a Stone Lake resident and as an Elk Grove resident in general, I am highly against this for all the reasons that are listed on that one single page of significant and unavoidable impacts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our 
Our next person to speak will be Randy Becker. If you'd like to unmute yourself and go ahead. Randy, it looks like you're still on mute. There you go. Randy, it looks like you're on mute, but we're not able to hear you. All right, Randy, if you want to raise your hand again there, I can come back to you in a minute. I'm going to um, go ahead and, and move on. We have four callers that are phoned in over the phone, and I want to check in with each of them really quick to make sure that they don't have a comment to make when you dial into the phone number, you're not able to raise your hand. So callers on the line, I'll just come to you each individually and ask if you had a comment that you'd like to make. Caller, did you want to speak on public comment? It looks like you're unmuted, but I'm not able to hear you speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, thanks. Give me a chance to uh, speak. Um, I try my best. Um, I don't know. There's a project that suddenly popped out a couple years ago. First, we thought it's just a uh, university. And how come they become to the uh, hospital? You know, that when they start, is uh, our neighborhood that nobody know The small business, nobody knows. Suddenly, they pop out the 13 uh storage the huge hospital i i disagree you know like uh, i i obsess this one uh i think that's not good for my uh living area not only because they bring the job and then we need to accept this you know this like uh if you get a nuclear plant that's make a job that's make money and something and we cannot doing this this wrong location to do, put this hospital in this small small area yeah that's my concern and i i don't want they only focus on this um, money issue it's the human life first and the bird nation life you know that's i think um yeah i know what else and I want to know is the, is the city mayor or the, or the high level officer want this hospital make their looking good or is our residential, our Laguna and the Agro resident people want this hospital? We have a hospital just down the street to the east side. They are building, they are, they are there. Why we need this? If the if university needed this hospital, they can relocate it to the bigger place and find that they're good place for them, but not here. I'm done, thanks. Thank you, would you mind stating your name just so that we have it for the record? Oh, my name is Z Wang. Thank you, I'm it doesn't show up on your Great, thank you so much for your comment. All right, moving on to the next caller, we'll check in here to see if they also had a comment. Caller, if you'd like to unmute your line and go ahead if you have a public comment, If you're trying to speak, your line is still muted. All right, we'll take that as a no comment. And we'll move on to the next one. Caller, we just wanted to check in to see if you had any comments that you wanted to make. All right, we're not getting any on this line either, so we'll continue to move on through through the people who have not spoken and would like to speak. Um, Doris, I'm sorry, I'm going to try your last name. Or Akobulin, if you'd like to go ahead, you are now unmuted. Yes, I'm a resident of Elk Grove, and I'm very concerned about the placement of the facility. 
I'm concerned about the quality of life and livability that it would then restrict us residents. Number one is the traffic and the congestion. When you look at the traffic impacts that would happen onto I-5, and at that point, you also have narrowing. The access of that would be very limited, create hazard, additional noise, and sound issues. Very much against that. Number two, in regard to the congestion and that it creates, it also impacts with added sound with sirens. In addition to that, you have the helicopter uh, location as well. I live in Lakeside. I am definitely against this. I against the placement of it, the impact to the businesses and the quality of life. Also the walking trail movement there is also going to be impacted. Our, we're, and considering where this location is right as we go into San Joaquin County, there's already air quality issue. It would negatively impact the air quality issue and getting an approval and monies and support through the state would be very difficult. And this would just put us in a worse situation where we have, as they talked about previously, it's dumb growth. And we need to be smart and have infill. This does not address our concerns as far as living and the quality of life now. So parking will also will create more congestion. The walking issue, biking, traffic for cars on impact on I-5. The location is not good and I'm against it and the impact that it will have for us as residents to have to be taxed in order to, to make this happen. This is a bad idea and I am definitely against it and we need to look at other things. The document needs to address the traffic. It's not adequate with the traffic. I looked at the document and it's not sufficient. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next person on the line will be Mimi DeVille. You are unmuted if you'd like to go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead. Thank you, I am a 20 year resident of Elk Grove. I live here, I work here and I play here. And I repeat my original objections to our community being railroaded by this project. There's absolutely no evidence that jobs will be brought here for our residents. We bought into a master plan community that is being rezoned without regard for our quality of life and without respect for our small businesses, all for a 9.8 million square foot lot with a monstrous building taller than anything in the city. It doesn't fit. I echo the sentiments of Dr. James Reed, so I will not repeat it other than to say, how does the DEIR ignore the Stone Lake Wildlife Refuge? I object to Steve Lee having any vote related to the certification of this project because he is biased and compromised by his relationship with CNU staff and executives. Some of the staff have engaged in harassment of residents who oppose Lee. His backroom deals were despicable and unbecoming of a mayor. I object to the visual character of this skyscraper and the precedent it would set for building height exemptions and outgrowth. Take it to Lent Ranch where it doesn't impact the neighborhood quality. I also urge us to move forward with Dignity Health. They are established here and building to a reasonable community standard. They were approved in 2013. They are not in a floodplain and they are not near a wildlife refuge that CNU seeks to destroy and ignore in the EIR. Lastly, council members, with the exception of Steve Lee, I voted for all of you and trust you to have our backs. Don't let us down and create another go small. Don't let them railroad us. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, we'll take a moment now. Um, if you would still like to speak for public comment and you have not spoken uh, during the meeting, if you wanna go ahead and raise your hand, otherwise it looks like, oh, here we go, Lynn Lee, I'll go ahead and unmute your line. You may go ahead. Okay, good evening. My name's Lynn Wheat. And what I'd like to bring up is there's a discussion about um, contracting with our police department. I would suggest, because we can look at pro uh, possibilities of um, crime migrating out to other neighborhoods, 
that like our residents who have CFDs that uh, pay for police services, that we make that a CFD district. And so then that would guarantee that yearly money would be coming in to pay for those uh, police services. And just like our city council and mayor currently vote to increase those mellow roofs on our homeowners, we would have the uh, availability and the uh, capability of in, uh, increasing those costs onto the hospital so we can make sure that we indeed do have adequate um, police services and our safety needs are met. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you for your comments. All right, next up is Matt Weaver. If you wanna go ahead and unmute your line, you're welcome to go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my comment and grateful for the opportunity to speak at this meeting, which is hopefully not just a technicality in the process and that the city is really vetting uh, what has been publicized as a already baked approval all the way since December of 2018. So here we are nearly 19 months later with the opportunity to speak and I've had an opportunity to speak publicly about this project before, but on the record, I'd like to really, first of all, environmentally, uh, want to make sure that on the record, we're looking at the increase in carbon footprint and the number of car miles driven by the residents of Stone Lake, Lakeside, Laguna, and other residents that are served by the merchants that are currently doing business in the Stone Lake Center. The incremental miles over the span of 100 years will create excessive pollution and reduce the walkability and livability of this neighborhood. There are no plans to replace the displaced businesses and contrary to the public record of Alvin Chung and his leadership team at CNU, there have been no concrete efforts to replace the intentionally displaced businesses. So the carbon footprint is a concern. Noise pollution is a concern. Site pollution is a concern. And the possibility that the neighborhood blight and homelessness and abandoned property may be a concern while well, this project has been advertised as serving the community in 2021 may do nothing other than serve as an eyesore in the community and increase the number of daily trips uh, out of the neighborhood and reduce the walkability livability score of the neighborhood. Further, as a business owner in Stone Lake Landing who has seen the CNU organization break promises, make promises in public, and silently back out of those things, abuse the merchants in the area, and what amounts to squeezing many, many local tax dollars, local small business and local services businesses out of the area. We are, going to, we are going to be announcing our closure of our business in the Stone Lake Landing because CNU has not honored their commitments. We recommend strongly that the CDA Elk Grove deny this application. Thank you for your comments. Um, next up, we have Matt Zver. Matt, you're unmuted. If you want to go ahead and unmute your line from your end, you can go ahead. Okay, I'm unmuted. Can you guys hear me? We can. Go right ahead. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, I'm in, uh, this is Matt Zeberg on behalf of Sacramento Region Business Association, and uh, I'm in full support of the CNU Medical Center because it will create high wage jobs for the region and quality health care. Um, some concerns I've heard earlier from earlier comments are traffic and congestion and things like that. These are, no matter what projects you're looking at or vetting, everything's going to cause these sort of issues. So this is a really good project and it's going to create jobs and healthcare quality in the region. And that will in turn profit the local businesses from the traffic and community support that comes into the local area. 
So on behalf of Region Business Association in Sacramento, I support the CNU Medical Center project and I request a, a, a affirmative vote in the EIR. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, if there's anyone else who have, has not had the chance to speak yet and you would like to, this, this will be our last call for public comment as I don't see anyone who hasn't spoken with their hand up. Brenda Ross, I'll go ahead and unmute your line. You may go ahead and unmute on your side and speak. Yes, hi, can you hear me okay? We can. Great, okay. Uh, well, I, I did just have to jump in here be, and I, I was not prepared to really say anything, but I have to say something after hearing a, a number of things. One, I have to say that the people that spoke um, in opposition to the CNU did a fantastic job. And I hope that the city council reviews very carefully all of the list, the very long list of oppositions um, that were outlined. The fact that Stone Lake Refuge is a jewel, I think is spot on. And that's nothing to take lightly. We have a jewel and we need to protect it. Number two, the size of that hospital is ridiculous. Number three, uh, Mr. Graham talked about insecticide use and the, the effect of bees in, in the region. And that's something that I had not thought about before, but I think that it's, it's very important to the, the surrounding area and the crops, everything that we have here. Um, but when I hear the people saying that they support CNU coming in. What I hear is that it brings jobs because of the construction and the electrical jobs. Those same jobs will be available if the hospital is built in another location. What I don't understand, and I'm not gonna question the motivations of our current mayor, but what I don't understand is why there is such an eager attitude about leapfrogging over the fact that we're in a migratory flight path. We live in a, in a refuge, a wildlife refuge. Why is that being just totally set aside? And, and the fact that this was left out of the EIR to a large degree, I think is very suspect. But finally, I'm just gonna bring in a, my own little story I, I told it at Stone Lake HOA meeting, so some of you may have already heard it, but just to leave you with a very simple thought and a, a comparison and a contrast. I had an experience here. I live in Stone Lake. I had an experience where we, we had a couple of little possums in our backyard. 30 second warning. Thank you. Little possums. I captured the possums. Now what do I do with them? I know that we have a wildlife refuge, so I called Department of Fish and Wildlife. No, you can't take them out there. I made several calls. No, you can't take them out there. Why? Because it upsets the wildlife and its natural nesting. If one little possum does that, what does a 13-story hospital do in the middle of a migratory flight path? Your time is up. Thank you for your comments. Thank you so much. All right, our next caller um, is Daisy Hughes. You can unmute your line and go ahead. Hello, my name is Daisy Hughes, and I would first like to object to the fact that there's only 45 days comment period. Um, this is 494 pages, and in light of COVID-19 and uh, distance learning and other excuses that I would just love to make right now, I have not been able to complete my review of the document. And I'm sure a lot of others are in the same position. So that's the first thing I want to say. I usually am totally prepared to speak, but I'm just not today. But something that I read, you know, I'm a mom and my kids go to Elliott Ranch, which is 0 0.6 miles away from the proposed site, which is um, very important because that was not given um, adequate consideration in the environmental um, impact report because it was 0.6 miles 
from the site and the site only considers issues within 0 0.25 miles of a school. So it's so, I mean, the, the words in here are incredible that um, even though children are particularly susceptible to long-term effects from emissions of hazardous materials, uh, the 0.6 miles uh, really seem to matter. And so that is not considered a significant impact. Um, I think about my children, our children in the community every day, and I worry about fires, I worry about flooding, and I feel that um, my community members and I are not safe living in Stone Lake anymore um, in light of what's going on in California. Um, and we are completely surrounded by, at the moment, dead grass. Um, so basically, if there was a fire that started, um, and let's say my child was at school, I would have to travel to the um, far, as far south as Stone Lake can go, and then go back north to get out onto Elk Grove Boulevard. And I can just imagine what that would be like. And I don't see any considerations in here in the EIR about um, these these types of events that are so commonplace right now that um, I think 0.25 miles versus 0.6 miles and the fact that our children can't breathe the air at the moment yet um, these these tiny little discrepancies mean that they're not truly considered to have an impact um, it just boggles my mind that I can live in a community where I will fe not feel um, as safe. And yes, I am talking about a hospital. The hospital is a, um, and the hospital is probably beneficial in a pandemic, it, which is a one in what, 200, 100 years we're going to have a pandemic like we're experiencing right now. And we actually had enough beds. Whereas the fires and the flooding in this area in Stone Lake, where we are completely trapped by the wildlife refuge, where we would have to exit onto Elk Grove Boulevard. Um, it's just really concerning for me and I think most members in my community. Um, this is the wrong place for this hospital. This is a residential neighborhood. Our streets cannot handle this change. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Robin, I am going to attempt to get you joined into the meeting. Um, you're our next person up for public comment. It looks like you're using an older version of Zoom, so I'm going to try something um, real quick here to see if I can get you in. So hang tight. Let's see. Robin, can you unmute now so you can go ahead and speak? Hi there, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. You're My name is Robin Strong. I have been a community member for over three decades and my family has been uh, raised in this area, absolutely loving the beauty and the waterfowl and the migratory birds in our area. It has really enhanced our life and the life of our children appreciating nature. And I just wanted to weigh in on two particular um, issues that I have or concerns about the project, one being the height of the hospital and the other being the flight path um, of the hospital and the potential danger to not only bird strikes, but also um, making them move and disturbing them in our area. We live, as you know, on the, on the flyway. And I just wanna to add too, that it doesn't just affect our local environment. This is the Pacific Flyway. And as others have said, this could imp have impacts much beyond our community and affecting the entire Pacific of the Americas um, with the effect on the birds. So I just wanted to raise those two issues, particularly with the height and the flight path. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your comments. All right, Barry Broom, you may now unmute your line and go ahead. Hi, uh, Barry Broom, President and CEO of Greater Sacramento Economic Council, calling in support of the project. Um, CNU is becoming one of the most important economic assets in the region. Uh, a teaching hospital is a very unique experience. So the residents of Elk Grove are going to get the best healthcare system in the state of California 
having access to a teaching hospital. Right now, we're probably sitting at 13% unemployment. And this coming June, we're expecting 10, 15% of public employees to be either laid off or furloughed. That would amount to about 25, 30,000 jobs. So it's a very important time for us to grow our economy. And uh, we're very supportive of the notion of building a world-class medical and pharmacy school with an elite teaching hospital in beautiful Elk Grove. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Again, just checking with our audience for anyone who has not had the opportunity to speak. If you'd like to do so, if you could please raise your hand so we can call on you. Otherwise, I'll hand it over to Antonio to do our wrap up. Thank you, Nicole. Again, this is Antonio Ablog, Planning Manager for City of Elk Grove. Um, if I could ask uh, Pat Angel to put up our contact information screen. I think it's this. Uh, give me a minute, Antonio. The uh, PowerPoint locked up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to stop the screen share for a minute and get and restart the PowerPoint. Okay. While Pat Angel is bringing up that screen, I just want to thank everybody for providing their comments tonight. Um, again, as Pat Angel recommended earlier, um, if you have additional comments or would like to re reiterate your verbal comments, uh, uh, we encourage you to submit those in writing and, and we'll have that information of where to send that up shortly. Um, again, after the public comment period ends, uh, Patrick Angel and Ascent Environmental will work with city staff on formulating a final EIR. Um, once that final EIR is completed, uh, that will allow city staff to take the project forward to a public hearing. Um, uh, as Pat mentioned, we, um, we are looking at approximately a November date for that final EIR. Uh, therefore, public hearings on the project, uh, starting with Planning Commission and City Council, will not occur before that November date. Uh, will likely come um, around four to six weeks after that final EIR. Um, again, uh, that concludes our comment session tonight. Uh, we encourage you to submit your comments in writing, and we uh, thank you for logging in tonight to submit your comments on the uh, draft environmental impact.